Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin III's comments in a Senate hearing signaled the kind of leverage the United States can use to influence Israel's conduct of the war in Gaza. Israel shrugs off a U.S. hold on an arms delivery, but some see a new strain in ties. With pressure rising for a ceasefire, Netanyahu was expected to meet with the CIA director. What we know about the weapons the U.S. sends to Israel. Israel presses on with its operation near the Rafah crossing as Gazan officials warn of a rising death toll. Israel reopens a Gaza crossing that is an important aid route. EU employees in Brussels demand a ceasefire and protest the bloc's stance on the war. The Biden administration on Thursday turned up the volume on strains in the U.S.-Israeli relationship as the defense secretary acknowledged publicly that President Biden's decision to hold up delivery of heavy bombs was linked to Israel's plans for large offensive in the city of Rafah in the Gaza Strip. Secretary Lloyd J. Austin III told a Senate committee said the United States had been clear from the very beginning that Israel shouldn't launch a major attack into Rafah without accounting for and protecting the civilians that are in that battle space. And again, as we have assessed the situation, we have paused one shipment of high payload munitions. While the president and other administration officials have publicly criticized the Israeli conduct of the war for months, it has often been in muted terms, saving the harshest assessment for private conversations. Mr. Austin's comments on Wednesday were the bluntest public statement to date that the disagreement carries consequences and a signal of the kind of leverage the United States can use to influence Israel's conduct of the war in Gaza. The United States and other allies have warned that an all-out assault in Rafah could lead to a humanitarian disaster for hundreds of thousands of displaced Gazans living in tents and temporary lodgings there. On Monday, Israeli tanks and troops made an incursion to take control of the border crossing into Egypt. With the scale and timing of their plans still unknown, Israeli officials have downplayed any dispute with the United States over weaponry and the war in Gaza, while also continuing to negotiate on a potential ceasefire that could lead to the return of Israeli hostages taken during the Hamas-led attack in October. Experts on the U.S.-Israeli relationship say the pause in delivering the munitions, which the White House confirmed on Tuesday, showed that the alliance had hit a significant divide with more ruptures possibly to come amid declining American public support for the Israeli war effort. It's pent up frustration on Biden's part, which eventually broke, Chuck Freilich, a former deputy national security advisor in Israel, said on Wednesday. The administration has been walking a tightrope between its very strong support for Israel and domestic pressure. This week in particular, two opposing elements of President Biden's approach to military support for Israel are converging and competing for global attention. With his approval of fresh U.S. aid involving weapons and equipment worth $827 million, along with an assertive speech against anti-Semitism at a Holocaust remembrance service, President Biden has made clear that he remains deeply committed to Israel. At the same time, he has signaled that there are limits to American aid and patience, suspending delivery of the heaviest of munitions, 1,800 2,000-pound and 1,700 500-pound bombs, over concerns they will be used in a possible full-scale assault on the city of Rafah in southern Gaza. In public comments, Israeli officials have mostly promoted America's long-term support and ignored the pause in deliveries of weapons. Speaking at a conference Tuesday night hosted by a local newspaper, the military's chief spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Haggerty, described coordination between Israel and the United States as reaching a scope without precedent, while insisting that any disagreements were handled behind closed doors. Sidestepping questions about the airing of American frustrations and the potential risk to future armed shipments, he stressed the importance of day-to-day -day coordination and operational assistance. Israel has a large arsenal to draw on and many options for how to proceed in Gaza that would not necessarily include the bombs Washington has delayed, military analysts said. Alone Pincus, a former Israeli diplomat, said that the U.S. decision was motivated by skyrocketing American frustration with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as pressure from some congressional Democrats to more closely supervise Israel's use of U.S. arms. And, he added, it was an attempt to warn Israel that more consequences could be in the offing. The logic behind this is a warning. If you don't get your act together, there's a lot more obstructions that could happen, Mr. Pincus said. Negotiators from Israel and Hamas were in Cairo on Wednesday amid a renewed international push on a proposed deal for a ceasefire, though Israeli officials said that major gaps remained between the sides. In a sign of the growing urgency, 
Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was expected to meet William J. Burns, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, on Wednesday afternoon in Israel, according to an Israeli official who requested anonymity to discuss the sensitive talks. Another person briefed on hostage negotiations confirmed that Mr. Burns was traveling to Israel. Mr. Burns has been shuttling across the region in recent days in an attempt to clinch a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas that would see the release of hostages held in Gaza and Palestinian prisoners held in Israel. The Israeli delegations arrived on Tuesday, hours after Israeli tanks and troops went into the southern Gaza city of Rafah and seized control of the border crossing with Egypt, disrupting the flow of humanitarian aid into the enclave. The most substantive sticking point in the talk centers on a phrase that appears in both the Israeli and Hamas-approved proposals, a path to a sustainable calm. In Hamas's revision, that phrase is clearly defined as a permanent end to the war and a complete withdrawal of Israeli troops from the Gaza Strip. Mr. Netanyahu has consistently opposed any deal that explicitly calls for a permanent ceasefire, saying Israeli forces would not stop fighting in Gaza until Hamas is destroyed and the hostages are released. Hamas's revised proposal, Mr. Netanyahu said on Tuesday, was very far from Israel's core demands. In his statement, he added that, military pressure on Hamas is an essential condition to secure the release of our hostages. Mr. Netanyahu, who is under pressure from the United States and other allies to agree to a ceasefire, said that while he had sent a mid-level delegation back to the talks, in tandem, we continue waging the war on Hamas. A White House spokesman, John F. Kirby, said on Tuesday that the negotiations were at a sensitive stage and that there should be no reason why they can't overcome those remaining gaps. Analysts said Israel's incursion into Rafah might either ratchet up the pressure on Hamas to make a deal or sabotage the talks. The Israeli military said it had gone into the city to destroy Hamas infrastructure used.